How will you prevent the Venus Project from becoming corrupt if people put up money to build the first city and try to dictate the policy of the city? First of all, the Venus Project would not be sponsored by people who believe that this system will work. It's the failure of this system that enables people to put up money for an experimental system. If doctors want to build a new hospital to operate differently, they build an experimental hospital and they check it out, see if it works. If it doesn't work, they go back to the other system. If the Venus Project designs a city and it doesn't work, we'll change the design until it does, just like all research programs. There's a lot of things in research that don't work. And so you don't stop doing research. You have to continue doing research until it does work. Will it work perfectly? No. Every year it'll get better, if you keep at it. So I see all things changing, always. I see no final frontiers, no utopias, and the basis for corruption. If you were to have a man finance a city and he tries to steer it in the monetary direction, it'll fail, just like the monetary system. So we'll have a city, which we can use, but the guy that runs the city will be out. His business will be out because people don't have purchasing power to keep him going. And as like I said before, if wealthy people all buy big yachts and they keep them loaded, ready to leave with food, sea piracy will grow. Be more pirates in the sea grabbing yachts because they can't sail indefinitely without fuel. They like go, go out to the West Indies and they can occupy an island, all these wonderful yachts and with millionaires. And if the people on the other islands are starving, they'll invade that island. Do you understand that? You can't live to yourself, is the message I'm talking about. If we don't take care of everybody, including ourselves, we cannot build a world free of war, poverty, and hunger. It's been said in religion, all these things, but they don't know, didn't know how to attain it. They thought if only people would be decent and fair, they can't in a competitive world. If you manufacture stockings that have runs in them, people have to buy new stockings. But if Larry invents stockings that don't have a run, he'll put you out of business or you buy his patent and don't produce it you want to sell stockings. So how can you be decent and ethical in a competitive world? How can you love your brother if you take advantage of him by owning a patent which stops him from making something that will benefit other people? If you take a patent out on crutches or your wheelchair, people can't use it unless they pay you. So all patents and private property deprive other people. When a guy is very wealthy, if he owns 4,000 acres of land, I would say he's kind of a selfish individual. You don't need 4,000 acres unless he gave it to some charity. I'd say that the man is truly religious. Doctors without borders, to me, are more religious than most church attending, attending people. People that do good without reward, you know. The only reward you get is seeing less poverty and hunger, starvation and deprivation, kids with swollen bellies, all gone. If that doesn't give you incentive, if your only incentive is a money system, then you don't understand human beings because you owe your own life to the advances made by Edison, Louis Pasteur and all the other people. You're alive because of them. So if you don't feel you want to put anything back into the earth to make it a better place, I would say you're harmful to yourself and society. Should we kill those people? No. Send them back to school to learn or show them evidence of the system you believe in and have them produce counter-arguments. Don't stop them if they say, well, the system kills incentive. Say, what is your evidence for that? Always don't don't kill them. That's, oh, if you start killing people, you'll always have people you want to kill. 
You know what I mean? The people just, they say, oh, those bastards, they don't care about anybody but themselves. Well, I would say that they need bits of information to be able to do the, do the things that are better for people. Well, who decides which is better for people? Eventually, the majority of people will decide that. If the system doesn't work, they won't operate it. Or they'll find a system that does work. You know, when I was a kid, cops used to blow a whistle and stop traffic. And, and I remember talking about a system. It was a red light, see. A section of pavement went up and it stopped the cars, you know, so they couldn't violate the law. Even if there's a red light, the guy is talking to his, somebody in the car, he can go through a red light. But we want, we don't want elevators that might stop on the floor you want it to stop at. We want it really to stop at the floor you want it to stop at. We don't want traffic controlled by a light if the guy isn't watching it. We want traffic controlled by a mechanism in the car. Instead of the red light, the car stops when other cars are passing. And when they cease to pass, then you, you get the go sign. But don't leave anything up to people. It won't work. Even on an aircraft carrier today, there's a guy that signals the planes to come in. If a plane has a landing gear problem, he's given priority. They tell the other planes to fly around a little till this damaged airplane lands. Nobody makes that decision except the conditions that prevail. Do you understand what that means? If we begin to run out of farmland and the wealthy people or the middle class have difficulty getting food, then a lot of research will be done in hydroponics and ocean farming. But right now you can't get a nickel for ocean farming because it's not that necessary. As long as they're eating, that's your problem. And if you make it your problem, you might kill the wealthy guy for his bank account or kidnap his wife for ransom so that you too can eat. So the system generates predatory behavior where we take advantage of other people. You say, well, that's human nature. That's the way things are today and have always been scarcity. So most people are out to take care of themselves. So if you don't take care of yourself, no one's going to take care of you. And so they make us predatory. The system is like that. But you say, well, I think it's up to each individual. If you really study it, you'll find that each individual is made to conform to the social institutions that exist. If they don't conform, they wind up as vagrants in prison or they have difficulty getting a job if they don't conform. So you're pressed by many different forces to conform. If you walked around without any clothing, because you don't believe in clothing, you'll be picked up and arrested, put in jail. If you continue to do that, you might be put in a mental hospital. But it, it isn't a free country. Nothing is free. In a free country, you're, you're free to make your own decisions. You never make your own decisions. If you live in any culture, they will work on you so that you correspond to the values of that culture. 